A lot of the supposed crimes the liberals are in trying to imprison Trump over seem a little bit weak to most people. He held on to some documents from his time in office, like many of his predecessors and even his successor, Joe Biden, before he was his successor, before he was even president. He called the Georgia Secretary of State when there seemed to be election irregularities. He incorrectly estimated the value of some of his properties. To most people, I think, those supposed crimes don't really rise to the level of imprisoning a former president who happens to be the current leader of the political opposition. Which is why John Stewart, in his heroic return to the Daily Show news desk, is here to explain to us why that last crime is super duper serious. And the attorney general of New York knew that Trump's property values were inflated because when it came time to pay taxes, Trump undervalued the very same properties. It was all part of a very sophisticated real estate practice known as lying. (laughs) So the judge calculated that the value that he gained from the lying with interest was around $454 million. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, that sounds pretty straightforward. Whatever gains you got from lying, you have to pay back. Well, that's because you're a f***. An idiot. Let, let, no, don't. <laughs> if you knew anything about business, if you had an MBA, you'd know. You're an idiot. We're talking about a victimless crime. They find uh, an ordinance or a law that has never been used ever before in anyone else. He's committed bank fraud where there's no victim. It, well, makes no, it makes no sense. No victims. There was no victim. Because they are not victimless crimes. First, the banks got paid back at lower interest rates. Although, to be honest, who gives a But second, money isn't infinite. A loan that goes to the liar doesn't go to someone who's giving a more honest evaluation. So the system becomes incentivized for Mm -hmm. corruption. Mm -hmm. And this is part of a different Trump fraud case. But avoiding taxes hurts all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What Trump did cheats the little guy. It opens the door to corruption. It hurts all of us. And apparently... John Stewart did pretty much the exact same thing. According to assessor records obtained by the New York Post, in 2013 and 2014, John Stewart's Tribeca home had an estimated market value of a little under $1.9 million. It's kind of odd. Tribeca is probably the nicest neighborhood in New, in Manhattan, which is the nicest part of New York, which is one of the most expensive places in the country. $1.9 million? The assessor value was even lower than that significantly lower. It was just $847,174, which is strange because that same year, 2014, John Stewart sold his property for $17.5 million. It's a pretty big difference. Stewart's property sold for more than 20 times the amount that the tax assessor valued it to be, which means that John Stewart paid significantly lower property taxes than he should have, which means that John Stewart did the very same thing that he lambasted Trump for doing, which always happens. The libs accuse Trump of colluding with Russia. We later find out that not only did Trump not collude with Russia, but they did. The libs accuse Trump of threatening to withhold aid from Ukraine if Ukraine didn't perform special favors for him. We later find out Not only did he not do that, Joe Biden actually did that exact same thing as vice president. The Georgia prosecutors accused Trump of running a mob-like corruption scheme. We later find out it's the DA and the prosecutor themselves who are taking kickbacks and acting like the mafia. Now, even on this somewhat niche accusation, misvaluing New York real estate, we find that the liberals attacking him once again have done the misdeeds themselves. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. The feds have raided P. Diddy's home. Puff Diggity Dog. Snoop Puff. I don't know. He's had a lot of names over the years, but uh, I, I, I want to say I told you so. But really, since he emerged on the scene with all the, you know, the drugs and the sex and the rap and the everything, I was a little skeptical of the guy. I was not 
convinced that he was living his life as a paragon of virtue. And uh, But who knows? The federal government's also extremely corrupt. So the whole story is really crazy. We'll get into it in just a moment. First, however, you got to get your smells and bells candle, baby, because what day is it? Do you know? It's Maundy Thursday. It's one of my favorite named days of the year because I didn't really know what Maundy meant until recently. Apparently, it comes from the Latin word mandatum and from a verse from our Lord who says, uh, a new mandate I give to you to love one another. As, as, right. So anyway, I'm getting far afield. It's Maundy Thursday. That means that tonight is the end of Lent, which means tomorrow on Good Friday is the beginning of the Triduum. After Good Friday is Holy Saturday. After Holy Saturday is Easter Sunday. And after that, you're not getting your smells and bells candle anymore. It's a, you know, it's a Lenten thing. So we got, we're going to stop it. If you want to stock up, I know many of you do want to stock up. This is the best-selling candle probably in the history of wax. Uh, they are selling in two packs and three packs also. So you get some more savings. Get yours before they are gone. Dailywire.com slash shop. How's it all looking? Everything the libs accuse Trump of doing, they have also done or done a more egregious version of it. Uh, how's it looking according to Bloomberg and Morning Consult? So these are not exactly right-wing institutions. Trump is absolutely destroying the competition with facts and logic and votes. Uh, in six out of seven swing states, Trump is winning. And it's not just a head-to-head -head Trump versus Biden, because that's probably not what the race is going to look like. The, the Bloomberg Morning Consult poll is looking at Trump versus Biden versus JFK Jr. versus Cornell West versus Jill Stein. Stein, Cornell West, even Bobby Kennedy Jr. are not going to take a ton of votes away from the two main candidates, but they could be decisive. If it's, if it's even remotely a close race, which probably will be, because Donald Trump is very popular and the Democrats cheat. So no, no, even the, even the Democrats have some voters. Many, many of whom are dead, but some, some of whom are alive. Uh, in any case, if it's, a, if it's a tight margin, the Cornell West vote, the Jill Stein vote, certainly the, the Bobby Kennedy Jr. vote could be decisive. So right now in North Carolina, Trump is up six. Pennsylvania, Trump is up six, even though good old Scranton Joe comes from the blue collar towns of Pennsylvania. Well, Trump is crushing him there right now. Arizona, Trump's up six. Nevada, Trump up six. Georgia, Trump is up six. Oh, sorry. Trump is up seven. It's unclear, though, if uh, pipes bursting will will in the middle of the night will affect that score. Wisconsin, Trump is up two. So, you know, you'd, you'd like him to have a little bit more of a buffer. And then Michigan right now is a tie. So in none of the, the seven swing states is Joe Biden currently leading. Uh, but, but what is this going to mean? Why is Trump doing so well with these other candidates in the race? Well, that's because Jill Stein, if she takes votes from anyone, she's the, the Green Party candidate, she's going to take votes from Joe Biden. Cornell West, if he takes votes from anyone, he's going to take votes from Joe Biden because he's a, a radical leftist. So for some leftists, Joe is just too moderate. Amazing to say, but but he is. I mean, in his, in his political career, Joe Biden always positioned himself as a moderate now, because Joe Biden doesn't know what his name is, it would seem that other people are pulling the marionette strings. And so he engages in policies that are pretty radically leftist, it, totally embracing transgender ideology, uh, embracing open borders uh, in a way that we've never seen before in American history, millions and millions of foreign nationals flooding the country. But, but even that is not far left enough for some voters. So they could go over to Cornell West, especially that this wedge issue of the Israel-Palestine conflict. The Democrat establishment is still broadly pro-Israel. The Democrat base is vehemently pro-Palestine liberation. So that that's that's going to be an issue where some people are going to say, I I just I hate Biden's Israel policy, so I need to vote for someone else. They're not going to vote for Trump. Trump is also extremely pro-Israel, so they're going to end up voting for someone like Cornell West, who's made Israel-Palestine a big part of his campaign. And then you get into JFK or RFK rather. But but even the the <laughs> rhetorical mistake I just made, I think shows you the potency of an RFK race because there are a lot of Democrats who think, man, I've been a Democrat my whole life, but the party's gone off the rails and Biden's an embarrassment. I miss the good old days of the Democratic Party. You know, the good old days like the days of John F. Kennedy. How many people say I'm a Kennedy Democrat? I came of political age during the Kennedy race. A lot of boomers say that. And RFK Jr. is a Kennedy. And his dad ran for president too. And his uncle was the president. So 
Who's that going to help? Who's that going to hurt? I've said from the beginning, I think that the Kennedy candidacy helps Trump and hurts Biden. Yesterday, as I mentioned on the show, Bobby Kennedy picked his running mate, who is a big lib, like a huge lib, like the former wife of Sergey Brin from Google, who's got a ton of money, who's supported Biden 2020, who's given a lot of money to left-wing causes. Well, Trump is jumping on this bandwagon too. He says, RFK Jr. is the most radical left candidate in the race by far. He's a big fan of the Green New Scam and other economy-killing disasters. I guess this would mean he's going to be taking votes from crooked Joe Biden, which would be a great service to America. His running mate, Nicole Shanahan, is even more liberal, in quotes, than him, if that's possible. Kennedy is a radical left Democrat and always will be, three exclamation points. Uh, it's great for MAGA, but the communists will make it very hard for him to get on the ballot. Expect him and her to be indicted any day now, <laughs> probably for environmental fraud. He's crooked Joe Biden's political opponent, not mine. I love that he is running. And I think Trump is being sincere here. I agree, I agree with everything that Joe Biden just said, or I'm sorry, that, that Donald Trump just said here. I agree that he is Joe Biden's opponent. I agree that Joe Biden, much more than Donald Trump, is going to be motivated to take Kennedy out of the race. And I love that Bobby Kennedy is running, which means that at the very least, the Democrats are going to try to deny him a ballot line in most states. That's why there was some talk that Kennedy might be looking at the libertarian line. Even though Kennedy is not exactly a libertarian, the libertarians have ballot access in all 50 states. And if Kennedy wants to pose any kind of challenge to Biden and Trump, he needs to be on the ballot. So he's not going to do that as an independent candidate. He needs some party ballot access. That could happen. And if that happens, maybe Joe Biden indicts him for something. You know, I don't know, spread misinformation. Uh, they'll, they'll do anything they can. Trump tr here trying to, to point out two things. One, he's trying to tell his supporters, don't even consider voting for Bobby Kennedy. Even though you like Bobby Kennedy on the vaccines, don't consider voting for him. He's a radical leftist. But he's also then trying to give an incentive to the actual leftists to vote for him. He's saying, oh, he supports the Green New Deal. Joe Biden doesn't totally support the Green New Deal. Oh, he supports this. Oh, he supports that. Oh, he picked this radical left-wing vice president. Uh, it, it's all to say, hey, disaffected leftists, go vote for this guy. It's a nice little wedge. And I like that it seems to have proven me correct. We got to talk about that sometimes. And you got to check out Pure Talk. With inflation on the rise, 20 bucks barely gets you anything these days. In most restaurants, you can't get a burger and fries for less than that. What about at the gas pump? You can get maybe a quarter of a tank. But do you know what it will get you? From my cell phone company, Pure Talk, you can get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of 5G data for just 20 bucks a month. Pure Talk gives you the same quality of service as the current cell phone provider that you got, but for half the cost. I want to ensure you, you heard that correct. This is the top tier coverage on America's most dependable 5G network for half the cost of other carriers. The average family saves almost a thousand bucks a year, all with no contracts and no activation fees. You can switch to Pure Talk with the phone and phone number that you currently use, or you can take advantage of their great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids, making the switch incredibly easy. You can switch over to Pure Talk in as little as 10 minutes. Don't spend another day spending ridiculous amounts on your phone plan. Go to puretalk.com slash Knowles. Right now, our listeners can get an additional 50% off their first month. PureTalk.com slash Knowles. Meanwhile, over on Team Biden, Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, was just being interviewed on a radio station in Charlotte. She was asked a question. I don't think a provocative question. I don't think a, an unfair question. I think she was asked a very fair and pertinent question that she didn't like, so she ran away. I told a number of people that I was talking to you today, that it was interesting, though, they all said, would you please just ask her, does the president have dementia? And so before I move on from that, does he? That, Mark, Mark, I can't even believe you're asking me this question. That is a credibly offensive question to ask. But you know uh, people ask it. Wait, oh, let me, no, 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 no. You, Mark, you, 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 you took, you're taking us down this rabbit hole. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me be very clear about this. Uh, for the past several years, the president's physician has laid out very, in a comprehensive way, uh, the president's health. 
we see we are in a different place than we were a year ago in gas prices. Uh, eggs, milk, uh, seafood products, uh, all the important uh, groceries, those costs have gone down because of what this president has been able to do. And, th- and with that, thank you so much, Mark. Have an amazing, amazing day. Wow. Wow. And she hung up. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely brutal in a few ways. It shows how bad Corinne Jean-Pierre is at this job. One, she needs to expect this question. This is not just the question of some shock jocks on the radio. Do those guys sound like shock jocks to you? No, they sound like ordinary radio hosts who are asking a question that everyone is asking around the world because it appears that Joe Biden is in cognitive decline. It looks like he's got dementia. She needs an answer to that. She doesn't have an answer to that. She says, what? I am so offended. I, uh, okay, well, let me be totally clear. Uh, <laughs> she pauses because she doesn't have an answer to it. So terrible preparation from Corinne Jean-Pierre. Then she says, his doctors say it's fine. Okay, nobody really believes that that means anything, though. And then she doesn't even have the good sense to hang up at that point. She, she would have been well within her rights to say, you know, That is an outrageous question, deeply offensive. You're clearly just trying to take pot shots at the president who's been a very capable president, whose doctor has cleared him uh, as as being cognitively very healthy many, many times. I I can see what this is. If you want to have a comedy show roast, that's fine. But don't don't, you know, diminish the the dignity of the president of the United States. I'll talk to you later, sir. Hang up the phone. There, at least, there would have been some motivation for it. It, Probably Democrats would have defended her in that. But what she does here is she says, no, no, he's fine. He definitely doesn't have dementia or whatever. And then she goes on. I cut out part of the middle because it was too long. She goes on for two minutes talking about egg prices or whatever. And then I'm sure people off camera in in the White House are saying to her, get off the line. You're blowing it. What are you doing? And then she says, okay, with that, uh, I'm just going to, okay, have a good day. Hang up. It's so weak. And and the only defense of her, the only defense of the White House I can muster is they can't figure out an answer for the dementia question. They can't figure it out because he's obviously in massive cognitive decline and everybody sees it. And the White House has been caught on hot mics admitting it. Remember when James O'Keefe went on that set up investigative journalist date with some dude in the White House, the cybersecurity director. And the cybersecurity director said, yeah, we all know it. We all know the guy's in decline, but we can't get him off the ticket. Ah, it's so frustrating. Yeah, I'm sure everybody in the White House, including Karine Jean-Pierre, is saying that. So what do you do? What do you do? You watch the polls go up and up and up for Trump. Great news for us. Very bad news for him. What's what, what are the issues here? You hear Kareem Jump here talking about egg prices are actually going slightly down. I mean, they're way up from when when Joe Biden took office. Every everything costs way more today than when Joe Biden took office. But you know, the egg prices have diminished a little bit. Okay, that's not even the top issue for people. According to a Harvard Harris poll, once again, not exactly a right wing source, the biggest issue as some of us have predicted, is immigration. Joe Biden, unfortunately for him, has the lowest approval rating on all the on all of the issues on his handling of immigration. 36% of respondents say that immigration is the biggest issue in the country. 33% say inflation and price increases are the top issue facing the country. Also a horrible weak point for Joe Biden. And then finally, economy and jobs comes in third at 23%. And even below that, crime and drugs, which is another extreme at 18%, extreme weak point for Biden. So you're looking at the four top issues, even just the top three, which is usually how you judge these things. Biden is terrible. But if you add the, the fourth top issue too, that's one of Biden's worst, crime and drugs, because the Democrats are suggesting that we let everybody out of prison and the Democrats want to open up the border. They're sending in federal agents to tear down border protections that states like Texas have put up. And that's how all the drugs get in. And the drugs are begin in China with the raw materials They're created in Mexico by the criminal cartels, which control the whole border. And then they come into America and they poison the country and people hate it. 
just absolutely devastating. I, I don't think I've ever seen a presidential election year quite quite this bad for the incumbent. Because often you'll say, okay, well, the top issue for people is X, Y, Z, and that issue is not good for the incumbent. But the second best issue is ABC, and actually the incumbent's okay on that, and the challenger is somewhat weak on that, and so you kind of go back and forth. On this one, Biden's underwater on all of them. So what's the case for re-election? Well, we know what the case for re-election is. The case for re-election is my opponent is super duper mega Hitler who is going to destroy the entire country, who's going to upend democracy, who's going to rip up the constitution, who's going to name himself Caesar, who's going to install a Nazi regime. And that's why it's very important that we put him into prison before you all can vote for him because he's beating me. And But if he if he does get elected, we are, are not going to have anything even resembling America's constitutional republic anymore. That's the only... That's the only campaign line they can muster. Because they're reading these polls too. It's not like these are the secret polls that only conservatives see. They say, oh, not talking about immigration. Oh, not talking about crime. Oh, not talking about inflation. Oh, okay. Let's talk about Donald Trump's real estate prices or whatever. Now, right now, I want to talk to you about gold prices. Well, you got to check out Birch Gold. Text Knowles to 989898. 98 98. Despite the anticipated rate cuts by financial experts, inflation continues to rise. The U.S. is grappling with a staggering debt of $34 trillion. And yet, what do we do? We continue to print more money, driving up the prices of everyday essentials. You can bury your head in the sand. I don't recommend that, though. It's very difficult to breathe that way. Or you can do something about it. Consider diversifying at least some of your savings into gold with Birch Gold. As a leading dealer of precious metals in the U.S., Birch Gold is committed to helping you discover how gold, silver, and other precious metals can help protect your lifestyle in the face of current and coming economic instabilities. Birch Gold makes it easy to own gold. They will help you convert your existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold. The best part is you won't pay a penny out of pocket. Make gold part of your saving strategy with Birch Gold. Text Knowles, Canada WLES, to 989898. Get your free info kit in gold. I very much enjoy being invested in gold, and Birch Gold has been the exclusive gold partner of The Daily Wire for over seven years, helping thousands of our listeners that can help you too. Text Knowles, Canada WLES, to 989898. That is Knowles to 989898. Speaking of growing political issues, you might have seen an issue that's cropping up around the country, actually, which is the problem of squatters. People going in, often illegal aliens, but other sort of ne'er-do-wells who are living outside the law, they'll go in and they'll just start living in someone's house or apartment. And you think it pretty easy easy enough, you know, the, the rightful owner comes in and just like tosses him out or something, but no, actually. There have been really awful cases where some of the squatters will murder the homeowners uh, in the news actually just this week. And, and then even, even crazier, actually, Sometimes the rightful homeowners can't evict the squatters because supposedly of squatters' rights. This, this has been an issue in places like France for a long time, which actually protects the right of indigent cr- criminals, <laughs> of, of bums, to take other people's property. And just by virtue of having taken it, they get to keep it for some time. Uh, now, because the left is on the rise in America, uh, some American institutions have protected this too. Not so in Florida, though. This issue came across Governor Ron DeSantis's desk. And so what did he do? He signed a law outlawing it. <laughs> simple as, very simple. The new law, which goes into effect at the beginning of July, ensures that property owners are no longer forced into all sorts of lengthy and expensive court proceedings to remove squatters. Uh, DeSantis wrote in a statement, quote, We're putting an end to the squatters scam in Florida. While other states are siding with the squatters, we are protecting property owners and punishing criminals looking to game the system. Simple. It's great. Love it. (laughs) That's all I have to say about it. We could, why can't we do that in other states? Why is it that DeSantis just, he sits down, oh yeah, look at the squatter thing. That's kind of new. That's weird. Anyway, outlawed. Boop, done. 
Why we need other conservative governors to do this? Simple. It, it's also one. It's important as a matter of justice, but two, it's just good politics. The the bill in Florida is overwhelmingly popular. There are certain issues that that Republicans focus on that aren't always so popular that are still very important to focus on. Something like abortion is probably the, the perfect example, where the country is fifty fifty on abortion, at least. At least if you frame abortion in the most favorable terms that the left uses, I think when you when you discuss abortion in a more precise way, actually, I think a, a larger majority of people oppose abortion and support the right to life. But it's a controversial issue. No question about it. Republicans, when we defend life, as we should, we sometimes take political flack. So you got to balance that out by signing really popular stuff. This is so popular. This is such a no-brainer. In fact, frankly, I feel the same way about the So every Republican governor should be signing legislation banning that stuff, as actually has happened in recent years. Squatters issue the same thing. Now, speaking of people's homes and legal issues, Puff Daddy getting raided, man. Uh, this happened a couple of days ago. I guess. I guess maybe even. I guess it happened on Monday. I'm just just getting to it now. It wasn't the top political story in the country, as far as I'm concerned. But we should get to it. The feds raided two homes belonging to Sean Diddy Puffy Combs, and that is in connection with a sex trafficking investigation. A uh, number of outlets have reported that agents with DHS conducted raids on homes in L.A. and Miami. Uh, Three women and one man have been interviewed by the feds, quote, in relation to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. This is according to NBC News. At least three more people are scheduled to be interviewed by investigators. Some people are reporting that Puff Daddy is apparently like the, the new Jeffrey Epstein or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what all this is about. All sorts of theories floating around, some a a little more implausible than others. But my main take on the story actually has nothing to do with the, the scale of P. Diddy's operation, the purpose of P. Diddy's operation, even the people involved. I I don't really know, and I, I don't even really care. My main takeaway is, we know he did all this stuff. To some degree or another, we know. For years, you've heard about P. Diddy's parties, and you know about the drugs and the sex. And I think Usher, years ago, uh, when Usher was a very young artist, went and spent some time learning the industry with P. Diddy. And he talked about it. He said, these parties are insane, man. There's drugs and sex and women and just everything, everywhere, you know? So we, we know it all happens. And the main conclusion, I guess, is that eventually the bill comes due. Eventually the bill comes due. It always comes due. There's no such thing as a free lunch. I don't want to just make this the platitude show today, okay? But this is a, a fact of life that people forget, especially in modernity. We think in modernity where we deny the moral order, where we... Uh, really embrace the expansion of private life, uh, even on the left and the right. On the, on the right, obviously, we want to privatize everything so we can keep more money. And on the left, they want to privatize everything so they can have weird sex. And, uh, but, but both sides embrace the great expansion of the private sphere and the great diminution of the public sphere. We, but both sides, the left and the right, hate hearing terms like common good. They don't like that. They don't, they just think, mm, no, they, when the left wants to talk about something even resembling the common good, they just talk about growing the government, you know, uh, and, and the right, you're seeing the beginning of a movement to finally return to talking about the common good. Uh, but, but it's still probably the minority view within the Republican party. So you've got, you've got left-wing communists. I guess that's probably the, the closest thing you have to, to public talk of the common good. But, but even there, it's not really the common good in the true sense of that word, in the classical sense of that term, which is that the, the common good refers to the stuff that we all have together, and it includes our individual good. 
it presupposes that there is a good way of living that we can know about objectively and somewhat reliably, and we can govern in accordance with that because the basic principle of of government is do good and avoid evil. It's the basic point of the state. And there are all other things that that come into this, principles like subsidiarity, which in America is is, um, codified into federalism, and uh, you you often want decisions made at the lowest level at which they can be competently made. And I'm not saying we're, we're going to have Leviathan in a totalitarian state, but we don't really talk about the common good at all anymore on the left or on the right in the real, true, classical sense of the term that would be conducive to our flourishing. It's all just private stuff. And then, as a consequence of that, we compartmentalize everything. We say, okay, I can live like a total weirdo creep in my private life, but in my public life, I'll still be totally put together. So I can do drugs all the time. I'm going to do drugs all the time in my private life. I'm going to have a completely messed up sex life. I'm going to be addicted to pornography. I'm going to be totally selfish. I'm not going to give to charity at all. I'm just going to, I'm never going to go to church. I'm never going to think about the moral order. I'm not going to read. I'm not going to help myself in any way. I'm just going to be a selfish animal in my private life. But somehow we're going to have a good public life too, somehow. I don't know, because we're going to be totally compartmentalized. Doesn't work that way, folks. Doesn't work that way. A lot of us do it on the internet. Forget even about the porn and that kind of stuff. Even just the way we talk to each other on the internet behind a pseudonymous account. We think, ah, yeah, I'm going to just, I'm, all I'm going to do is just troll people all day and I'm going to be really vicious and cruel and weird. And, but but that, that's not my public life. That's just my private life. No, it's all the same. You're just, you're a person. You're a person and we're a country. And if everyone is just constantly engaging in vice and selfishness, then our country is going to be vicious and very, very selfish. I have no idea what the, what the broader implications of what Puff Daddy was doing are. I, I, I should rephrase that. I don't know what the intermediate implications are. I know what the private implications are, which is that he appears to have been doing a lot of drugs and having sex and doing weird stuff. And I, and I do know what the broadest implications are, which is that If everybody's doing this kind of thing, we're going to have a really corrupt country. You can't simultaneously live two lives. Now, speaking of crimes, Senator Bob Menendez, remember him? He's the Democrat from New Jersey. Hilariously corrupt. Everybody's known about it for many, many years now. It looks as though the bill is finally coming due for Bob Menendez because once again, the the feds have got him. He's back. This all really started for Menendez, not when he started to engage in the corruption, but when he opposed Barack Obama. And I believe he opposed Barack Obama on the matter of opening up Cuba. And after Menendez said, look, I'm Cuban. I can't can't support you, Mr. Obama, trying to, to loosen the restrictions on Cuba. Shortly after that, there's a federal investigation of Bob Menendez into the corruption that everyone knew he was engaging in. And he actually beat those those allegations, but then they hit him again and investigators found envelopes full of cash in his house and just all a lot of evidence of extreme corruption. But he wouldn't resign. And I thought this was so delicious. In fact, I was coincidentally just speaking with a member of Congress on a flight to or from DC. And he said, you know, I've known Bob for a long time. That guy is only going to resign when he gets his, when he gets off the hook, maybe if he gets his family off the hook, but definitely if he gets off the hook. And that's what he's doing here. So, so Bob Menendez's latest chest move, which is going to have huge implications for Democrats, is that he says he's not going to run for re-election as a Democrat coming up for, for his next Senate race. He said, I will not file for the Democratic primary this June. I am hopeful that my exoneration will take place this summer and allow me to pursue my candidacy as an independent Democrat in a general election. I don't think this is what this is really about. I think what Bob Menendez is actually insinuating is the opposite of what he says. He says, look, I'm not going to run as a Democrat. So you can nominate some other Democrat for my seat. I'm confident that I'll be exonerated. And then I can run as an independent Democrat. I think the insinuation here is, look, I'm not going to run for the Democrat nomination. I'll back off. I'll go quietly into the sunset if I'm exonerated. If you let me off the hook, liberals who run the deep state, if you let me off the hook, liberal elites who control our political order, 
then I'll play ball and you can have your new Democrat senator. But if you don't let me off the hook, I'm going to run as an independent Democrat. And then you're going to have a, another official Democrat nominee, and then the Republican's going to win. And then you're going to lose your majority. And then Chuck Schumer's not going to be the leader anymore. And then even if Joe Biden gets reelected, he's not going to get anything done. And if Trump gets elected, you guys would be in big trouble. That, I think that's the insinuation. And I love it. That's, pr- that's probably the smart card he should play. Bob Menendez is not exactly the most ideological member of Congress, certainly of the Senate, probably of the entire U.S. Congress. Bob Menendez is threatening to throw the election to Republicans if Democrats don't let him off the hook. And that puts Democrats in a deliciously beautiful spot. You should be able to trust that your kid's content is safe and free of woke propaganda. Now you can with Bent Key, the Daily Wire's brand new kids entertainment app, available now on Roku, Samsung, Fire TV, Apple TV, Android TV, and more coming soon with amazing characters, timeless stories, and hundreds of episodes. Bent Key is designed to ignite your kids' imagination and curiosity with brand new episodes every Saturday morning. That's right. Saturday morning cartoons are back. Our most popular show, Chip Chilla, returns for season two, starting April 6th, exclusively on Bent Key. Try Bent Key for free with our 14-day trial. Just incredible shows that your kids will actually love and you can trust. How do I know this? Because I let my kids watch it and they love it. Unlock the magic of Bent Key for your kids today. Head over to bentkey.com, use code UNLOCK, get 14 days of unlimited access to a world of adventure. My favorite comment yesterday comes from Valerie Von Skulls825, who says, living in California literally costs a leg. That's true. That's true. Doesn't It doesn't yet cost an arm and a leg. I hope. I haven't checked the news this morning. But we can now say, officially, living in California costs a leg. And now the upside is if you can't afford groceries because of how expensive it is, you can eat the legs. So you know, maybe it's a wash. I don't know. I don't know how it turns out. Speaking of the consequences of elections, a writer for The Atlantic, Josh Barrow, has just come out and said that Sonia Sotomayor, the Obama appointee liberal justice on the Supreme Court, should retire now. And the article is basically exactly what you would expect. What he writes in there is not all that interesting. The fact that he wrote it, the fact that The Atlantic published it, is very interesting. This kind of article, and you're going to see more of them as November approaches, this tells me the Democrats are not confident that Biden is going to win. If the fix were totally in, if the Democrats felt that they had enough juice between the polls and the ballot harvesting and the this and the that, to get them over the finish line in November, they would not be calling on Sotomayor to resign. She's got a few good years left in her. She's one of the most far-left justices on the court. So they should they should want to keep her in. Joe Biden, who knows what Joe Biden's going to do? Uh, they don't think that Biden is a shoe in They probably don't even think that he's likely to win re-election. So they want Sotomayor to retire now. I, I don't think she will. I, 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 frankly, I just don't think there's even time for that at this point. Probably, probably the this the Republican senators could hold it up. Maybe it's a, it's a little bit unclear because the Democrats do officially control the Senate, uh, but it's just so close in the election year. There could be some chicanery to gum that up, so it's probably too late. Uh, but the Democrats are desperate because they don't know they don't know what else to do. And if Trump wins again. Who, who are the justices who are going to retire? I don't know. Sotomayor is, is no spring chicken. Clarence Thomas is somewhat elderly, but uh, that guy, I think, is, is going to stay in office until he's gone. You know, I think you're going to have to carry him out, uh, you know, as stiff as a board. Uh, but you, you could see a world in which all of a sudden you now have, you can't call it a, a six vote conservative majority Supreme Court because John Roberts is kind of a squish. So let's call it right now five to three to a squish. Maybe it becomes six. Maybe it becomes seven. Who knows? Big, big stakes on the court, which we haven't even really talked about for 2024. Now, speaking of the consequences of Supreme Court decisions, there is a Daily Wire investigation. This is from Leaf Lemahieu. 
uh, really worth checking out. It's about a thousand pages long. How a leftist network of websites floods red states with abortion pills with no consequences. Uh, subheader websites advertise foreign abortion pills to abortion seeking women across the country, no matter what. Really, really important uh, investigation. We now know, as I've mentioned on the show a couple times recently, the majority of abortions are not surgical. The majority of abortions take place when people take a poison pill and it kills their kid. The liberals are trying to liberalize access to the abortion pill. There's a, a case before the Supreme Court right now on this very topic. Uh, but this carries major risks. Obviously, to the babies, it's going to result in a lot more babies being killed. Uh, it poses risks to the women because uh, these these pills are not very well regulated. They're quite dangerous, actually, especially when you're buying these pills from un unknown places, from unknown doctors. Uh, you know, women can be seriously injured or even killed. And But then f furthermore, the pills pose a major threat to the political order because right now, after the Dobbs decision, states have the right to regulate or even ab abolish and outlaw abortion. They have the right to do that, obviously. There's no provision of the U.S. Constitution that says women have the right to kill their kids. It's, uh, it's nowhere in there. No one even pretended it was in there until Roe versus Wade in 1973, and now that's been overruled. It was totally a lie. Uh, so if it's the case that the states have the right to regulate abortion, then the states have the right and the obligation to regulate these drugs. But if these drugs are just being bought on the internet from some other state, or from some other country, well, then the states have to really get involved. And I know that conservatives in recent decades have been terrified of regulation. They said, no, 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 we don't want to give the government any more power. We need to let the free market sort this out. Uh-uh. No, that's not true, especially when we're talking about poison specifically intended to murder babies, which might have the side effect of killing mothers as well, and, and certainly would have the side effect of killing the, the right of the people to govern themselves in these states. Really, really horrifying stories in this report. Strongly recommend you check it out over at dailywire.com right now. And then once you read it, I strongly recommend you write to your governor, your state representatives, and uh, demand that they regulate this immediately. And, and we can also hope and pray that the Supreme Court rules correctly to, to further restrict the abortion drug at the federal level. Speaking of weird sex stuff, it has been one year since the horrific Nashville shooting where a tr But here, when not only is the shooter left-wing, but, but is embracing an ideology that is being ardently promoted at every level of the American left, you don't get it. You don't get it. You won't see that. You won't see any admission of that. In fact, all you, what you're going to be told is that the shooter is the victim. And what you're going to be told is that to, to commemorate the day, we need more vengeance. We need more vengeance. We need more absurdity. We, we need an even greater rebellion against reality. And you know who, who gets hurt in the rebellions against reality? The innocent. That's who. Today is... Theology Thursday. The rest of the show continues now. You do not want to miss it. Become a member. Use code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, at checkout for two months free on all annual plans.